Hi, this is Dr. Amrita and welcome to the Health Wealth Bridge podcast. Today I will discuss two very common ear problems. The first one can present at birth. The second one can happen at any time during childhood or adulthood. Information is power so you never know when you will be helping someone when you forward this podcast. Do share it on your social media or maybe even on your WhatsApp chat to help somebody who is looking for an answer. Health query number one. My two month old baby has a pinpoint hole in front of her right ear. Do I need to worry? The ear develops from the joining of six tissue heaps known as the hillocks of his. When there's a problem in their fusion or joining, there can be pitch like depressions in front of the ear auricle or the pinna. This is the most common above the level of the tragus that is a small cartilaginous part in front of the ear. So how common is this? It occurs in 5 to 6 babies per thousand. It can happen on one side or both sides. From 25% to 50% children it might be bilateral or on both sides. Bilateral is said to have a genetic link. What you should watch out for are infections. Often that particular hole will start having purulent material coming up. There might be a swelling, pain, fever associated with it. It could respond to oral antibiotics but it would recur. Recurrent infection is an indication of surgical resection. During acute infection you cannot resect it in entirety. Incision and drainage during infections should be avoided to prevent scarring and fibrosis which makes future surgery very difficult. Isolated preauricular sinus is infrequently associated with hearing loss, renal abnormalities and craniofacial abnormalities. Audiological testing should always be done to rule out hearing problems if any. A renal USG can be performed if the preauricular sinus is associated with other facial dysmorphic features, a family history of hearing loss, maternal diabetes during pregnancy. That was preauricular sinus, that is pre meaning in front of auricular meaning the ear. And sinus is a blind passage or sac leading into a cavity from a surface hole. Health query number two. I have yellowish fluid coming out of my ear. What can it be? This could be ear discharge. What are the causes of ear discharge? Ear discharge occurs when infections in various parts of the ear cause secretions. The causes could be otitis externa. An infection involving the external ear that is the auricle or the pinna and the external artery canal. It could be a furuncle or a boil or otomycosis that is a fungal infection. Acute otitis media causing bulging and sudden perforation of the eardrum can also cause release of pus and blood. Pus gets trapped behind the eardrum and the pressure may cause the drum to rupture and the pus mixed with the blood gets released. This generally occurs after untreated cold is left as it is for a period of 5 to 7 days. It is usually accompanied by fever and earache. Rupture of the eardrum occurs with the decrease of pain and pus and bloody discharge. Chronic otitis media. When ear infection causes persistent discharge for more than 12 weeks, it's called chronic otitis media. It may be accompanied by a perforation of the tympanic membrane. Otitis media with effusion. Generally associated with allergic rhinitis, adenoiditis, tonsillitis. In this case, a sticky discharge occurs which resembles a nasal discharge that happens during a cold. CSF or cerebrospinal fluid otoria can occur through the ear. It's a clear fluid escaping from the ear following head injury. If the junction between the ear and the brain is breached, the brain fluid leaks out. This is a serious condition with the risk of meningitis and you should always visit your nearest ER whenever an accident causing such a condition occurs. The different types of ear discharge are watery that is CSF fluid coming from the brain, mucoid, 
Midlayer goblet cells are the source. It indicates a eardrum perforation. This is sticky like the goo which comes out of your nose. Can occur due to otitis externa, furuncle, infected fungal infection, squamous type of chronic otitis medium. Pus plus mucus. Infected mucus indicates eardrum perforation. Chronic otitis media mucosal type happens with a eardrum perforation. Pus plus bloody discharge can happen in chronic otitis media squamous type. Pus plus mucus and blood can also happen in acute suppurative otitis media when there is a sudden perforation of the eardrum. Chronic otitis media mucosal type with granulation can also cause bleeding. And all these cases where there is bleeding from ear, you should definitely consult your doctor urgently. What are the important investigations you should do in such a case? Your doctor will first do a otoscopy. He will examine. After proper examination of the ear, he might ask you to get more investigation done like an autoendoscopy where you will have a chance to look at your own ear. It's an endoscopic examination of the part of your ear which you cannot see. Pure tone audiometry helps to assess the diminished hearing which can occur due to the ear discharge and the infection that's in the ear. A prolonged discharge can gradually erode the small bones responsible for sound transmission in your ear and cause problem in the long run. A tympanometry is a test to check whether your eardrum has a perforation, whether it's thinned out, whether there is fluid behind an intact TM can all be checked with a tympanometry test. A high resolution CT scan of the temporal bone is needed to check out to check whether your temporal bone is eroded. What are the options for treatment for a discharging ear? Treatment might be medical, it might be surgical or it might be surgical plus medical depending on the condition. What are the other complaints associated with an ear discharge? There could be a swelling behind the ear, it's called a postoral abscess. There could be ear pain behind the ear due to mastoiditis. There could be partial or complete loss of hearing. Earache is the most common presenting symptom in case of acute otitis media. If uric occurs in chronic otitis media, it's considered a dangerous sign or a super added infection. Dizziness can occur. There could be dizziness with nausea and vomiting. There could be a ringing sound in ear called a tinnitus. In acute and chronic mastoiditis, there could be infection and inflammation of the mastoid bone causing pain. A postoral fistula which is an opening in the skin behind the ear connecting with the mastoid bone. All this can occur in chronic otitis media eroding the bone. Acute mastoiditis could also happen during acute suppurative otitis media. Accompanying signs such as fever, headache often indicates potential involvement of the brain and the meninges leading to meningitis, brain abscess and other intracranial complications. Facial palsy can occur if there is involvement of the facial nerve. Deviation of the mouth, difficulty closing the eye, difficulty chewing, eating or blowing or puffing could all be indication of a facial nerve palsy. The treatment depends on the exact cause. Often ear discharge is a symptom ignored for long years. Avoidance of the problem will put you at risk of serious complications including permanent hearing loss. You will find a link to the book in the description of the podcast below. Thank you for listening. Till next time. Health Wealth Bridge Flash does not provide medical advice and is for informational and educational purposes only and is not a substitute for professional medical advice, treatment or diagnosis. Call your doctor to receive medical advice. If you think you may have a medical emergency, please dial your local emergency response phone number. Thank you. You were listening to Dr. Amrita on the Health Wealth Rich Podcast.